Hey guys, welcome back to another Battlefield Tips video. Today I'm going to be walking you through my top 5 DMRs for new players. Now this video is going to be focused on the Recon class specifically, so if you want to check out the support class video that I've done previously on my channel, that will be linked in the top right hand corner or in the card at the end of the video. Before we get into today's video however, almost 95% of you guys watching these videos right now are not currently subscribed to the channel. So if you find this video helpful in any way, shape or form, then be sure to leave it a like, comment and subscribe with the bell notifications turned on so you don't miss another Battlefield Tips video. So what exactly does the Recon class do? Well, they have a multitude of roles within Battlefield 4, but the most common one is Counter Sniping. Now in an ideal scenario, this should be their primary function, but they can also assist with eliminating enemy RPG teams, for example, to protect your vehicles, or they can put down a recon beacon to allow your squad mates to spawn in behind enemy lines. The recon class is an essential part of any squad, albeit sometimes there are far too many recons in each map to even be effective. I am however a big believer that a squad should contain at least one of each of the four classes available, so if you're a squad leader, and in particular if you're actively talking to the members within your squad, then be sure to dish out those roles equally to ensure your squad can be as effective as possible on the battlefield. As per the previous videos, the DMRs we're going to be talking about today are listed in no particular order and are the best for new players in my own personal experience. If you want to see me go over my top 5 snipers for new players in Battlefield 4, then be sure to let me know down in the comments or by leaving a like on this video. Okay then, so to our first DMR today, we're going to be looking at the Mark 11 Mod Zero first. Now, this one in my opinion is one of the most versatile DMRs within the entire game. It has a reload time of just 1.85 seconds and a 20 round magazine. Therefore, you're going to be doing some serious damage to enemies if you can land your shots on target consistently. For the most part as well, you can even use the Mark 11 Mod Zero in close quarters. However, I want to stress that depending on your situation, I personally like to switch to my sidearm in this instance if I know I'm going to be going up close and personal on enemy combatants. Something else that is important to note about this gun is it's a 3 shot kill at close quarters and at longer ranges to the chest. The Mark 11 is a pretty bizarre DMR in the sense that it's the only one in the game that will allow you to deal that kind of damage out at those ranges. Now before we do move on to our attachments today, there is a pretty huge downside to the Mark 11 and that of course is its rate of fire. Just like the other DMRs, it ranges between 260 and 333 rounds per minute. This is going to put you at a pretty huge disadvantage against pretty much any other fully automatic weapon in close quarters. So for my attachments then, I use the ACOG sight as I personally prefer to use most of the DMRs out to 100 meters or more, but sometimes on some CQB maps of course that isn't possible. So I would usually switch this out for a holographic sight for more precision aiming in close quarters. I also run the laser sight which provides a 33% increase to hitfire accuracy, giving me a much greater advantage in close quarters, and this is also perfect if an enemy tries to surprise me by coming up close and personal. Next I run a heavy barrel that increases the long range accuracy of this DMR by reducing the maximum ADS spread by up to 50%, allowing for more precise aiming. However, this is unfortunately at the cost of a 33% increase to recoil, therefore I will not be firing this weapon as quickly as I can press left mouse button especially at those longer ranges. To counter this however, I also run an angle grip on the Mark 11 as this particular grip reduces first shot recoil by 33%, allowing me to be much more precise with my first shot at longer ranges. Now we're going to talk about the RFB. Now the RFB is a gas operated semi-automatic rifle manufactured by Keltec Industries in Florida. The rifle is also fully ambidextrous and is chambered for the 308 Winchester cartridge. In Battlefield 4, the RFB comes with a standard 20 plus 1 round magazine. It can fire up to 260 rounds per minute with a maximum range of around 3,000 meters. The RFB has a unique forward ejection system, which gives it its name. Spent casings are ejected into a tube over the barrel and then gently dropped out of an opening near the muzzle. The RFB is actually available for all classes within BF4. Therefore, if you want to carry out something like force protection with your squad, then you could easily do this at longer ranges, whilst also carrying a gadget such as an ammo crate with the support class. One of the main reasons I have included this DMR in my top 5 for new players is because it's also the first DMR unlocked after obtaining 12,000 points while playing as the recon kit. So then for my attachments, I use the PKA 3.4x scope for improved sight picture and I also much prefer this particular scope in BF4 because it replaces the traditional Russian chevron reticle from BF3 with a circle and crosshair reticle similar to that of the holographic sight. Next, I run a tack light that allows me to see players in close quarters, and with this I'm then able to quickly make a decision to switch to my sidearm if possible. This attachment is particularly effective on the darker corridors and buildings of Operation Metro. 
I also run a heavy barrel, again to reduce the maximum ADS spread at longer ranges by up to 50%, as well as the potato grip. Now, the reason I'm running the potato grip is I do not currently have any of the other grips unlocked. However, if I did, then I would again be choosing either the angle grip or the folding grip for reducing the first shot recoil by 33% in semi-automatic fire. Next up here, we're gonna talk about the SKS. Now, the SKS has to be my favorite of all the DMRs within Battlefield 4, and let me explain why. As a new player to Battlefield 4, it won't take you very long at all to unlock the SKS, as it's only the third DMR to be unlocked in the game. If any of you have ever played BF3, then the SKS in BF4 behaves pretty similar. It boasts a low recoil for a DMR, as well as a medium fire rate and average damage, being able to kill most targets with three hits, although it is less powerful than other DMRs tied to the QBU-88. In terms of stats, the SKS is a semi-automatic rifle chambered in the Russian-made 7.62 round, and is capable of firing up to 333 rounds per minute with a maximum range of 2,450 meters. Just like the Mark 11 Mod Zero, you're going to be dropping enemies if you're able to land all three of those shots to the chest at almost all ranges. The main downside of the SKS, however, is it's also got the shortest maximum range of all the DMRs within the game. So, for my attachments, I run the ACOG sight on the SKS as I personally prefer to use most of the DMRs out to 100 meters or more anyway, this is for the exact same reason I gave for using it on the Mark 11 Mod Zero. I just find the scope easier for acquiring and staying on target at longer ranges. With some DMRs, I also like to stay concealed. Therefore, I do not run a laser sight on the SKS, even if I have the option to do so. Next, we are again using the heavy barrel for that all important reduction to the maximum ADS spread at longer ranges, as well as the stubby grip. Again, the stubby grip is not ideal for this weapon, as it is actually designed to improve accuracy in automatic rather than semi-automatic fire. So I would use either the angle grip or the folding grip for a 33% reduction to first shot recoil. Our penultimate DMR for this video is going to be the SCAR HSV. The SCAR H sniper variant is a semi-automatic rifle chambered in a 7.62 NATO round and is capable of firing up to 260 rounds per minute. One thing to note however, and this also applies to the other DMRs I've spoken about today, if you were to add a suppressor, then the bullet velocity will be greatly reduced and thus will also reduce the rifle's maximum effective range by some considerable margin. Therefore, unless you're playing hardcore, I recommend you not equip a suppressor. Other than that, the SCAR HSV also comes with a standard 20 plus 1 round magazine and is capable of dropping enemies in 3 shots or less depending on the location of those shots hitting the player's body. The SCAR HSV is almost statistically identical to the Mark 11 Mod Zero, with faster empty reload and less tendency to drift right. While the Mark 11 Mod Zero, however, has faster bullet velocity and longer maximum range than the SCAR HSV, so this is something you want to bear in mind before choosing which DMR is right for your situation and playstyle. So for my attachments, once again we are running the ACOG sight, and this time we have a target detector instead of a laser sight. Why you ask? Well, the target designator is designed to detect enemy players within a cone in front of me, which I feel personally helps me to be more tactically aware of my surroundings, and in most cases allows me to make split-second decisions on the fly. Thankfully though, the target designator only activates when you ADS and cannot be used in hip fire. Next up, I'm also running the LS06 suppressor. This is a Chinese suppressor that increases stealth by hiding my muzzle flash and in position on the minimap. This is perfect for eliminating enemy snipers behind enemy lines and carving a path out for your teammates to safely proceed onto an objective. Bear in mind though that this attachment does reduce bullet velocity and also increases bullet drop, so you will have to sacrifice the safety of having some additional distance with the danger of coming in closer to the enemy to pick off your individual targets. As of right now, I do not have an underbarrel attachment for this DMR and I have to say it's pretty hard to be accurate without one. Therefore, you should look to add either a folding or an angled grip for that all-important reduction to first shot recoil. Finally, the last DMR I want to talk about in today's video is the M39 EMR. Before I go into the weapon stats, I do want to say that this is the third to last DMR you unlock in the game and will require you to obtain a DMR score of 37,000 before it can be unlocked, so do keep this in mind. I have, however, still included this DMR in my top five for new players because I know there are still a lot of players out there that remain pretty dedicated to the DMRs within Battlefield. So then onto the stats. The M39 EMR is a semi-automatic rifle chambered in the 7.62 NATO round and is capable of firing up to 300 rounds per minute with a maximum effective range of 3,250 meters. The M39 EMR has the fastest fire rate in its class and the second fastest bullet velocity of all the DMRs while still maintaining a sizable magazine making it a good choice overall. As I mentioned earlier, the only real downside of this DMR 
is the fact it does require a lot of time to be spent using DMRs in order to be able to unlock it. Finally then for my attachments on the M39 EMR, today I'm going to be running the Coyote Red Dot site. Now this site is the equivalent of the American Reflex and Russian Cobra Red Dot sites. And right now the reason I'm actually using this Red Dot site instead of an ACOG is because I've only recently unlocked this particular DMR. However, this is not to say that the Red Dot site isn't effective outside of 50 meters. You just have to be able to land your shots at chest height or above to do some serious damage to enemy players. Since I'm also using this DMR for more CQB environments, I'm also running the target designator once again to detect enemy players in front of me and improve tactical awareness. Once I have a barrel unlocked for this DMR, I will once again use the heavy barrel to reduce maximum ADS spread by up to 50%, allowing for some more precise aiming, as well as the angled or folding grip to reduce first shot recoil by up to 33%. In summary then, Battlefield 4 has a wide range of DMRs to choose from for different types of engagements, with many of them excelling inside of 200 meters or less. In my view, it will all come down to what you feel comfortable with using for your playstyle. So with that being said, that was my top 5 best DMRs to use for players new to Battlefield 4. If you found this video useful, then be sure to leave it a like and consider subscribing for more Battlefield Tips videos coming soon. Thank you very much for watching today, I'll catch you in the next one.